dad lived on this five acre place. Grandma lived up the north end, dad lived down to the south end. They always had this little table that I just knew that there was one of them, but in later years I got to find it out that it was two of them, that they was casket stands, go to one at each end of the casket. It was just odd sizes of squares and rectangles was on the top. It always fascinated me and got me to wanting to make things with little pieces. I call myself wood mosaics and I make anything from Lazy Susans to boxes up to tables. I was born and raised in Independence, Missouri. In high school, they had woodworking courses. Back then, for us, they had E's, S's, and M's. It'd be like an A. I was straight A's. I spent four years in the Marine Corps. I come out and found Kathy, and we married. My wife, she was from the country. She wanted to get out of town. And so we, we finally found this place up northern Missouri, moved up here in 72, lived in a tent for about over a month before we got the shell of a house put up. And in 1980, I got to thinking, well, my daughter was getting up seven, eight years old by then. I told her I'd make her a hope chest. That was the first thing I made with this process of using little pieces. I'd spent basically six years experimenting, perfecting my technique while I was working in town. I'd been working at Bond Wholesale. I'd been working there for 14 years. And uh, give them a notice, give them two weeks. And then we started doing craft shows. Got to going with Silver Dollar City which is a theme park down in Branson area. Silver Dollar City, since it's a theme park, 1890s, then we wore costumes. And so I started making clothes for that and I started using the Seminole patchwork on it because it would look sort of like the wood mosaic pieces. This is Seminole patchwork is what it is. One year we did get to go to the craft festival at Dollywood for a month and work there. And, of course, we used the costumes then, too. Yeah. Let's go around this way. Silver Dollar City, in the late 90s, they stopped doing the mall show. So I started saying, well, we're going to have to get on the Internet. That seems to be a common thing. It was a little difficult at first because you don't know, is there going to be money enough for coming in? But it worked out. We don't get rich on it, but we do do okay. Living out here in the country, we have our goats and our chickens for meat, and uh, that's how we raised our kids. But sometimes it looks funny even to our telephone guy when he sees that we have hand pumps in the house that we pump our water with, and then he's working with all our computers sitting around. It's just our choice and the way to go and not owe money somewhere. I get a lot of my ideas from different quilt patterns because a lot of quilt patterns have the two basic diamond and triangle shape that I use. It's all intuitive. Only schooling I had was wood shopping in high school, basically. Anything else is just what I've picked up on my own. I don't know where I got it. It's just been there when I needed it. This is where it brings out the beauty of the wood. I use just a clear oil finish. A lot of people can't believe the colors that you can get from wood, the yellows, the bright yellows. And I'd show them to people, well, the natural wood colors would be pretty. I say, this is natural wood colors. I've not done anything with the wood. And there's so many different colors to choose from. Like I've got a, a table down here, it just looks like a flame. I try to put contrasting woods together because it gives the illusion of movement. On the large tables, there's over 6,000 pieces when you include all the pieces on the pedestal and the feet, including the top. 
Took me quite a long while to make them. But uh, I was pleased with how they turned out. I would have been making a whole lot more money all my married life if I'd stayed working in town. But uh, I get more enjoyment out of making something of beauty.